The name of our project is Tattoos and Mods, but we like to shorten it down since it's aimed at a younger audience, so we named it Tats and Mods. Uh, we will give you a visual and information on Tats and Mods, so we'll be keeping you entertained. What, so is, ta what is Tats and Mods? <laughs> There's different types of modifications to the body. The most extreme types is um, scarification, where they'll scar your body and then wait for it to heal, and then there was a pattern out of the body. A tattoo is a form of body modification where ink is inserted into the skin. And um, usually this will cause an open wound to um, appear, and this can be infected, so you have to take good care of it, and its ultimate healing time is about six months. So where did tattoos originate from? Tattoos originate back to the second millennium, around about the Egyptian times, and also it carried on through the tribal times as well, the African tribal times. Tribals, um, people used tattoos um, in, ancient, like in ancient times to use it as a form of um, mask, so when they were hunting prey or something, it'd be used to show um, like their kind of tribal clan and um, kind of disguise themselves. Um, it's also been used as a sense of identification. Um, it's been used to, um, it's been used in the Holocaust um, and prison inmates, and give, to give them a sense of identity and not a good sense of identity, but literally objectifying um, people to a number. Yeah, like in certain prisons, such as in Mexico, police would um, identify people by their tattoos. So if they have certain gang tattoos, they'll put it in a certain area in the prison so that there's no conflict. However, today, tattoos is more of a trend, and it's also used as extreme advertising, as you can see here, goldenpalace.com. It's mainly used also for self-expression and as to express a sense of identity within individuals. Why we chose tats and mods? Statistics show that there's been a massive interest in tattoos, especially among Western areas, as one out of five Brits now are inked. There's a total of up to 14% Brits who have at least one tattoo, and majority of these are um, ages 26 to 40. We would think it'd be 18 to 25, but that's, that's, the, that's what's interesting about our interviews. Yeah. We decided that this, this was by far the best in terms of feasibility and content because um, in Britain, especially around places such as Camden, it's a notor notorious area for tattooing and fashion and trends. So in terms of um, impartiality, our aim is to visit places such as Camden, but contrast these areas into business areas such as up London gain impartiality by interviewing those who are for tattoos and those who are against tattoos. Target audience. Our focus is um, social class E and students aged to 18 to 25. The reason because of this is it's an early age where people start to think about things like tattoos. But then they'll also grow older, so why not hit them early with the information? But we also like to get information from people that are higher class, every class, so that we can have a fair um, opinion from everyone. Um, types of questions we'll ask in interviews. Um, our main concept we're going to try and discover is how tattooing um, affects employability in the future and um, how and mainly, mainly the reasons why people get tattoos. Um, in terms of um, um, in terms in of law, the Tattoo Miners Act of 1969 says that anyone aged under 18 cannot get a tattoo legally. Therefore, we will abide by these regulations and only tattoo people who are over the age of 18.
So as I said before, the main concept behind tattoos is to see why people get tattoos and job um, perspectives. Perspects. Only that also that we will inform our audience with the pros and cons of tattoos, such as infection and diseases. Um, the good thing about um, tattoos is there are already lots of content out there that we can gain influence from, so we can use um, secondary research from other types of um, documentaries and use archive footage and gain it to our own documentary. SORT analysis. Um, there's a huge um, interest in tattooing and this is gaining, this is rapidly increasing every day. And as well as this, it gives you awareness of certain individuals of society today which people may not be aware of. And as I said before, um, London is a common place where people will be found with tattoos, so we live close to London, so in feasibility wise it's possible. One of our weaknesses is that it may sway young people into like the wrong direction. Like we don't want to give off a bad influence through um, our pitch, uh, through our documentary. And also, our archive footage may be disturbing to older audiences, so that we might tone it down a little bit and not show everything we might censor as well. Um, opportunities. Um, opportunities is it, will, it could possibly um, make people think twice about tattoos and inform them with um, if they should really get one at certain types of ages. As well as that, um, it will uh, allow them to kind of gain um, almost friendships with other people with tattoos and allows them to have a self, a sense of um, being part of like a social group with people with tattoos. One threat is trying to get permission from people in the public, especially when you're dealing with older people. Since we're young, they might, they might not be too too weary around us, so it'll be hard to get permission from the older generation, so yeah. Psychographics. Um, our main target audience will be mainstream, it's because it's such a big trend today that um, many people you see on the streets today will possibly have one tattoos due to its um, popularity amongst the internet and the media today. But aspirants are the most influenced due to this. Because of celebrities and because of people in the media, people, especially young people, are influenced to get tattoos and modifications just because they have. However, it would not really interest any reformers because um, it's not natural at all and it is open to infection. Therefore, it won't really interest any reformers. Audience appeal, gratification and uses. Um, our research will provide useful statistics and facts about tattoo, including the pros and cons, however, and, and how it might affect judgments and in terms of employment. Um, as you can see here, there's a news article with a man who ended up getting a tattoo on his face, who quotes, I am devastated, and he added that he could no longer contemplate looking for employment. We will discuss this further in our documentary. Yeah, that's one of the main points we've our documentary is being marked for life. Is it possible to get removed or not? Social relationships. You also may inspire or motivate audience um, members about tattoos and give them a good um, sense of why they should really get one if they really need one. Escapism. It allows our audience to escape from reality, kick back and watch a documentary about what is so common amongst society today. We'll be doing this by making a whole documentary entertaining, as well as adding information for the older audiences. And last for personal identity. People with tattoos will be able to express their identity through this type of modification. Whether they regret it or not, we will discover this and explore this further. Factual TV viewing programs have a huge market. The good thing about um, factual documentaries are they have a huge market in the media today. As you can see from 
Barb, um, from number 14 to 24 in millions, there, there's loads of news channels. This therefore proves that um, we already have a huge marketplace for factory production. Therefore, for tattoos, um, we will, will still have quite a big audience. When it comes to other um, tattoo programs within the industry, there's shows like such as London Inc. And that has already a huge following around the internet, such as um, a million views on almost each of the videos. So that gives us um, a head start in knowing what, um, how much of our audience would view our, our documentary. And interesting enough, even the demographics from YouTube also suggest that um, majority of um, people with tattoos are aged from 13 to 17, which is interesting, as well as 25 to 44. And also online, there are loads and loads of reviews of um, tattoo programs and documentaries. Therefore, this shows that people are interested and people will watch our documentary. In terms of Ofcom's broadcasting code re relevancy, um, from section one, protecting the under 18s, material that might seriously impair the physical, mental, or moral development of people under 18 must not be broadcast. In terms of showing extreme body modifications, this might prove to be quite disturbing to younger viewers. Therefore, we need to make sure we do not disturb them or influence them to do anything that they will regret in the future. Right, section 5, due impartiality. To ensure that news in whatever form is reported with due accuracy and percentage of due impartiality, like as mentioned before, we will, we will make sure that it is impartial in all terms possible by gathering various interviewees in terms of target audiences. And section three, crime. Material likely to encourage to, or incite the commission of crime or lead to disorder must not be included in television or um, radio ser services. In terms of this, as mentioned before, to the Tattoos Minors Act, we'll make sure we will not interview anyone under the age of 18 about tattoos. Fair use law. The best way to work around the fair use law is getting the people involved to sign a release form. The reason for this is that people might not want their face to be on certain things such as TV or internet, but they might like to be have it to, um, to be shown within a classroom or a type of educational state. Therefore, we'll make sure we tell them it's completely fine for them to not reveal their identity and we will blur their image out if needed. The best way to do this is to credit people, and especially if you're using archive footage, is when you get permission, they'll also want you to credit them as well in the, at the end of the documentary. As well as this will include a bibliography of any research that we have taken and used in our own documentary. Constraints. Um, our main constraints are wandering around the streets of Camden, simply getting rejected for interviews by people who are busy. So this will be the main problem with on-screen film. However, the, due to the amount of areas in Camden, we we have we reckon we won't have that won't be much of a big of a problem because there's so many people we can try and interview. Conclusion. Um, our aim is to not influence anyone, but inform them. Inform them. Therefore, it is completely up to them what they take from this documentary and think about tattoos after. Primary research. Right. Here is primary research we conducted in the studio. Make it a bit big. Instantly from the first five seconds or so, we can tell that we have used loads of closed questions. So one thing we have gathered from this is to use open questions that do not involve 
one worded answers. As well as this, you can clearly see the lighting and everything isn't as professional as it could be. So we need to make sure if we do do any interviews in the studio that we use three point lighting and make sure everything looks perfect. As well as this, we need to make sure we use a much better microphone so the audience can actually hear what the interview and the interviewee is saying. And also, we were we thinking of using more than one camera, so it's not just a stationary camera to keep the audience more attached to the screen. Should we stop there? Also, another thing, another technique that we'll be using is a lot of cuts because to prevent the use of private conversations and the um, audience not understanding what we're talking about, we'll use cuts. Um, location recce. So here's a picture of Camden Lock, which is notorious for tattoo, tattooing and tattoo parlours. It's a really busy town, so we should get quite a few on location interviews there. Also, Camden is a very diverse place. There's a lot of different cultures, a lot of different styles. So, In terms of diverse ethnicity, we can also try and get a range of audience. As well as this, we'll be using um, the broadcast studio in Thomas Tallis School, or even classrooms, wherever makes our audience feel comfortable and open to speak freely. Gantt chart. This is our Gantt chart. Um, we're planning to start on the 10th, or well, we've already started. Um, we plan to finish on the 25th of March 2013. Any questions? Then you said that you don't want to influence um, the viewers into like, doing anything they will regret. Do you think tattoos are bad then? No, because everyone has their own opinion to tattoos and modifications. The reason why I said that is we don't want to mention modifications when someone just goes out and gets a full body tattoo just because from our documentary and then regret it the next week. Our aim is to not show our opinion in the documentary but express other people's opinion in the documentary to an impartial state so you can kind of get a good balance of two sides of the same subject. Any other questions? Thank you for listening guys.